All right, this video is going to focus on z-scores, but we're going to start here with a normal distribution curve. Um, knowing that a, we have a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 6. So recall that when you're dealing with a normal distribution, your mean always goes directly in the middle. And each one of these vertical bars uh, is a standard deviation away from the mean. So as we go to the right, we're going to add a standard deviation. So if we start with 80 and we add a standard deviation of 6, we're now at 86. We're going to add 6 again to get us to 92, and we add 6 again to get us to 98. When you go to the left, you subtract. So we'll sub take away 6, we're at 74. Take away 6 again, you're at 68. Take away 6 again, you're at 62. So in thinking about the empirical rule, if you recall, here is 68% of our data, here's 95% of our data, and here's 99.7% of our data. Right? There's your, your basic. But that's only if you fall directly on a z-score, or a, a standard deviation. What happens if you're in between? Well, that allows us to go with z-scores. So if we have a z-score, recall that to find the z-score, we take the value minus the mean, and we divide by the standard deviation. So for our example, recall that the mean is 80, the standard deviation is 6, and this value here, that's our value. So we say our z-score is value, there's our value, minus the mean over the standard deviation. You always want to do your numerator first. So 86 minus 80 is 6, 6 over 6 is 1. So my standard deviation, or my z-score here is 1. Test score of 89. Well, z equals, this is my value, so I start with my value. Remember the mean is 80, the standard deviation is 6. 9 minus 80 is 9. 9 over 6 is 1.5. You always want to go to the nearest tenth, uh, either hundredth or tenth, depending on the table and what you're doing here. Uh, test score of 86. So value minus the mean over the standard deviation. Negative 12 over 6 gives us a z-score of negative 2. 64. 64 minus 80 divided by 6. Negative 16 over 6 gives us a negative 2.67. Now, what test score? So now we're looking for the value. We're looking for an unknown value of x was earned if the z-score was 3. So again, remember your formula. We're going to plug in what we know. We know the z-score is 3. We're trying to find x when the mean is 30, if the mean is 80, excuse me, and your standard deviation is 6. So we have to undo this fraction first. So if I multiply both sides by 6, think about when you multiply fractions, those will cancel out, and you're left with x minus 80. 6 times 3 is 18. Now, to get x by itself, we add 80 to both sides. So a score that is 3 standard deviations, a z-score of 3 means 3 standard deviations away, we have uh, a score of 98. Let's go to a new problem. Professor Ivy recorded the age of the 110 students in her Math 123 classes. The ages formed a normal distribution with a mean of 30 and a standard deviation of 4. Anthony is 38. What's his z-score? Well, value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So we do the numerator first. 38 minus 30 is 8. Divide that by 4, and we get 2. So he's a z-score of 2. Now, what percentage of students are younger than Anthony? Well, think about this picture. If Anthony's z-score is 2, he's going to be over here. Percentage of students who are younger. Younger means to the left. We're looking for this area. Now, if you look at your z-score table and you find z equals 2, the table gives you the value of 0.9772. And recall that the table does give you area to the left of the z-score. So if I have a decimal of 0.9772, to change that to a decimal, I multiply by 100, and therefore 97.72% of the students are younger than Anthony. Letter C, same, same information. Remember, the mean is 30, standard deviation is 4. So Andrea is 21. What's her z-score? Well, 21 minus 30 divided by 4. 
negative 9 over 4 gives me a z-score of negative 2.25. What percentage of students are older than Andrea? Well, her z-score of negative 2.25 is going to put her here. Older is area to the right. Now, if you look at our, our z-score table, we don't have a negative 2.25, so I'm going to round this to the nearest tenth, which is negative 2.3. So when I use this in the table, it gives me 0 0.0107. But remember, that table is area to the left. To find the area to the right, remember the whole thing is 100% or 1. I take 1 minus the area to the left, and that gives me area to the right. As a percent, that's 98.93% of students are older than Andrea. Number three, the monthly utility bill in a city from a form a normal distribution, that should say form, uh, with a mean of 70, mean of 70, standard deviation of 9. Use this information to answer the following four questions. What is the probability a utility bill will be less than $79? Well, anytime you want to find a probability using the means, we have to find a z-score. So first things first, z equals, here is my value. So value minus the mean over the standard deviation. 9 over 9 gives me a z-score of 1. Now, when I draw my picture, remember, a positive z-score is to the right of the mean. So here, z equals 1. Probability will be less than that. So I'm looking for this area here to the left. Because it's to the left, I simply look at my table, I find z equals 1, and the answer spits out 0.8413, and there's my answer. Because it's to the left, so my probability would be 0.8413. You could say 84% um, if you wanted to take that to a percent. What percentage of the customers in the city have a utility bill between 61 and 79? Now, we just found that for 79, the z-score is 1. But what is the z-score for 61? So, value minus the mean over the standard deviation. Well, that's negative 9 over 9. That's negative 1. So this has a z-score of negative 1. Now, when you think about your picture, here's negative 1, here's positive 1. We're trying to find this area in between. Well, if you find, uh, if you look in your table for the z, z equals 1, that gives you all of this, and that area is 0.8413. But I don't want all of this, right? I want to take, yeah, take that out. So if I look in my table at negative 1, it gives me area to the left, and that area is 0.1587. So think about it. If I subtract those, right, if I subtract the, the dark blue line here, and, I, and then I subtract the light blue line, these pieces are going to go away, right? Because that's what the overlap is. When you subtract, you get, all you're left with is the line in the middle. So I'm going to subtract these two, and I get 0.6826. So what percentage? 68.26% of customers will be between those two lines. What is the probability of utility bill be higher than 92? Well, first I find the z-score. 92 minus 70 divided by 9. So 22 over 9 is 2.4. So when I draw my picture, right, 2.4 is over here. A utility bill higher, higher is to the right. But when I look in the table with a 2.4, it gives me 0.9918. Remember, table always gives you area to the left. So I'm going to have to take 1 minus 0.9918, and that will give me this area, which is 0 0.0082. And that is my probability. Very, very small. What is the probability a utility bill in this city is between 50 and 75? Well, we've got to find z-scores for both of them. So 50 minus 70 divided by 9 is negative 20 over 9, which is negative 2.2. Then I have 75 minus 70 over 9. 5 over 9 gives me 0.55. So, when I'm looking at my picture here, I have a z-score of 0.55, a z-score of negative 2.2, and I'm looking for the area in between. So again, recall, we start with the one far, uh, furthest to the right. When I look at 0.55 in my table, I get a probability of 0.7088, and that's all of this. But I want to get rid of 
this piece, which is just this. So when I look at negative 2.2 in the table, it gives me 0 0.0139. When I miraculously subtract those, right, the overlap is what goes away. I'm just left with in the middle. And so when I subtract, I get 0 0.6949. And there's my probability of being between those two values.